Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. Hey, on ETCG1 we talk about stuff, blah 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 blah. We aren't doing repair videos. And if you're not into that sort of thing, well, I'll put a link in the description to my Eric the Car Guy channel and you can go there and watch all the repair videos you like. However, if you wish to stick around and join in the conversation, like the grown-ups, feel free to hang out and uh, throw in your two cents or four dollars or whatever it is you feel like throwing in there. The topic of the day, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that the Eric the Car Guy universe is a buzz with the 2014 season uh, that I'll be bringing you videos on this here 79 uh, Ford Fairmont, which uh, I hope to turn into a Mustang in Fairmont clothing. But since since I bought this thing, since I brought it home, I, I've fallen in love with it and I hate to say that, but I have. I mean, we've talked about vehicles having a soul, that kind of thing. This one's got something. It's got something that just touches me down to my man parts and says, hey, you know, let's go for a ride. You, you can't say no to that. You, you, you just can't. I, every time I get in here, every time I drive it, it puts a smile on my face. I spent the better part of a day going to get it. It was two and a half hours each way to drive out to, to where I bought it. And on the drive back, you know, I thought, well, I'm picking up this car, I'm gonna do blah, blah, blah to it. Like I said, making a Mustang pretty much. And the more I drove it, the more I just, I, I felt the car. I felt at one with it. It started to, I started to connect with it. And that's something that I don't feel in newer vehicles. Newer vehicles to me seem like just cookie cutter, ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. And everything usually works the way it's supposed to. Uh, the mechanical controls are replaced by electronics and everything works or it doesn't work. I mean, it's, you turn the key, fires up, you know, a bunch of stuff starts happening, a bunch of computers start talking to each other, and away you go. Uh, there's ABS, there's TCS, there's SRS, <laughs> all kinds of acronyms to make sure that you're safe and wonderful. And in a way, what that does for me is it insulates me from the environment around me. And it, and it puts me in like a little automotive cocoon, if you will. And and it feels good, you know, it, to, to some sense it feels good, but it's sort of numbing. When I get in this thing and drive it, I mean, there's a part of you that wonders, is she going to make it? You know, let's face it, it's an older car. But there's another part of you that's, that's just like, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's like a connection. It's, like, it's more like a horse than a car, you know, and, and, and you sort of communicate with each other telepathically in a way. And, and you get to feel, you know, when she's acting up, maybe she's got a little bad gas or maybe a little vacuum leak or something like that. She's just got like a little hiccup. She's temperamental, might be a little pissy, you know? And, and that gives it personality. Now, granted, this is a 1979 Fairmont. It's not exactly Ford's finest hour, you know, let's face it, okay? But at the same time, it's from a time that was before all this other gobbledygook that we now have a standard that we've now become used to that's that's now part of you know the lexicon of of being a driver in the 21st century this is 20th century and it comes from like early 20th century technology uh, as i said in the welcome video to this the only thing really truly electronic on this is the is the ignition system and even that's rudimentary. It's probably a couple of transistors and poof, away you go. Maybe a Hall effect sensor is probably in there. It's got a 3.3 liter straight six, produces about 80 horsepower when it was new. <laughs> Who knows what it does now, but it's only got 86,000 miles on it. But it, it's, it runs like a top. It, I, I feel those mechanical workings. I feel that choke kicking in. I feel the, uh, the gears shifting, you know? And, and I can hear the, the little vacuum uh, motors inside the dash moving around as I move the levers to change the temperature or something like that. And there's only three settings. It's so basic. I mean, this car doesn't even have one of those mirrors that says objects are closer than they appear. It doesn't even have one of those flip up mirrors like when you're driving down the road to, you know, get rid of the glare if somebody's pulling up behind you. It doesn't have that. I mean, those were options. It doesn't even have a cigarette lighter. I mean, <laughs> it has air conditioning. It has none of those other things, but it has air conditioning. Go figure. But, you know, I, I think by the tinted windows and the fact that it does have air conditioning and very little else, I think this was the car that was driven back and forth to Florida. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking it was somebody older, somebody from a different time that took care of their stuff, and now it's in my hands. And I could not be happier to have it. But my point with this video is, is to just put that out there as far as, 
you know, how, how driving something older makes you feel as compared to driving something 21st century. You know, I, I, I love the 19th century. I love the 20th century. I mean, it brought us to where we are now. It's more industrial, it felt more manly in a lot of ways. But, but now it seems, like, it seems like the cars that I'm driving are, are treating me like a child. It's like, ah, uh, you really, you, you don't really know how to drive, so I'm gonna brake for you. I'm gonna keep the traction, for, the traction for you. I'm gonna do all these things for you so that you don't have to worry about it. And, and I think that's a disconnect that we've, we've lost in a lot of modern vehicles. I mean, we don't really have that, that connection to them the way we used to. We don't rely on them in the same way. We just expect them to work. So I think it puts us in a different mindset altogether. And I didn't realize how far off the path I had strayed. It's been about five years since I've old, owned and operated an older vehicle like this. The last one was my 72 Galaxy. Um, this one moved up a few years to 79. I, I really, it's, it's difficult to describe and I hope I conveyed my thoughts in this video well enough to where you understood where I was coming from with it. And perhaps you've had a similar experience. In fact, I invite you to join in the discussion about this video, either in the comments or there will be a link in the description to the discussion on my website over at the forum if you wanna join in over there. But let me know your thoughts. What's it like driving old, older vehicles if you have an older vehicle or if you know somebody that has an older vehicle, the way it smells, the way it feels. Uh, that's another thing I like about this, the smell of old vinyl. <laughs> It's just, it's like a time warp. I drove something old like this in high school. It smells like, it, that, and that was old then. In fact, when I was in high school, these were what we were driving because these were like 10 years old-ish, something like that. So we drove this kind of junk that were hand-me-downs from our parents or what have you, or just second-hand cars that we bought out in the world to drive as new drivers. It's not like you, well, some people get those nice new shiny things at 16, but I was not one of those people. And you know what? I'm glad I wasn't because I, I really enjoyed my Galaxy when I got it. So what are your experiences? Where do they stem from? Are, are you into older cars? Are you, have you driven older cars? How do they make you feel? Uh, how do they smell? How do they, what kind of memories do they invoke for you? And, and what's the difference between something modern and 21st century and your older whatever that you're driving? I'd love to hear about it. So let's uh, keep the discussion going. And I'm excited about the 2014 14 season of Eric the Car Guy and getting to know our uh, 79 Ford Fairmont a little bit better. Hey, if you have automotive questions, I have automotive answers. Where do I have them? Over there at thecarguy.com. That's where I suggest you go. And when you arrive there, we have a nice little welcome video that tells you about all the different options that are available to you while you are there that help you solve those automotive issues. If you wish to connect with me socially, however, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos, including ETCG1 videos, with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you next time, perhaps in another century. <laughs>